Hey guys, it's Super Airsoft back at you with another Airsoft video. Today, we're gonna be going over recording Airsoft gameplay. Now we're gonna start things off with going over my specific Airsoft setup, and then we're gonna venture off into how you guys can go in and determine your own Airsoft setup, which cameras are best for you and your specific use case, and a couple of other things that you might wanna consider prior to jumping in and recording gameplay. But before we get things started, remember to like the video if you end up liking it, subscribe if you want more content just like this, and comment down below if you have any questions about this content here in today's video or just about airsoft in general all right to kick things off let's start talking about my specific setup here i have my main camera that's always on my head giving me that first person perspective kind of view and then i have another camera that's on the front of my gun giving me a zoomed in image of what it is that's actually being shot and in a sense giving me a lot more of a dynamic video when it comes to actually editing the video and posting it on youtube for my primary setup i use the gopro hero 11 mini it's lightweight, compact, very durable because it doesn't have a screen on the front as well as the back. And this is important for Airsoft because your helmet gets shot a lot more than you think it does. So not having that screen, very, very useful. And like I said, lightweight and compact. This is something that's going on my head. I don't want to have any additional weight that I don't really need to be there. So... I chose the 11 mini. It also records in 5.3K up to 60 FPS. And I'll talk about my specific settings here in a little bit. My camera is mounted on my helmet through an NVG to GoPro adapter mount. These things are like 10 bucks on Amazon. And this along with pretty much anything that I talk about today will be linked in the description. Now, my secondary camera is the Runcam Scope Cam 2 4K. I've made an entire video going over this specific camera and why it's a fantastic beast of a scope cam that allows you to zoom in, see your enemies getting shot. The full video is up here here somewhere but to quickly go over it it's rugged it's small it's compact very lightweight holds its battery really well and it's got corning gorilla glass in the very front so it can take a beating the commonality between both of my cameras and one thing that i put a lot of heavy weight into is the ruggedness and durability because i know how much my equipment actually gets shot up last thing i want to touch up on with my setup are my settings for both the gopro and the run cam let's jump on in and see those real quick all right to start things off we're going to go into the gopro quick application connect your camera click the video icon and then the pencil icon in order to go into our image settings here Starting off, we're going to go into our resolution. We're going to put this at 5.3K so we can enable hyperview. Uh, you also do have to put this limitation of the frames per second at 30 if you want that hyperview. Now we can go into our lens option and choose hyperview so we can have that wide field of view. Scroll down, go into the hyper smooth and turn that on as well so you can have that buttery image smooth image stabilization. Going into the bit rate, I like to keep it standard. And then the shutter speed, we're going to keep lock it at 1 over 60 uh, because we are using that 30 FPS. We do want 1 over 2 times your FPS. Moving down into ISO, we're going to put that at 100 at the min. And the ISO max, we're going to go in and choose 800. Moving down, we're going to go into the white balance. We want to make sure that's at auto and we don't want to lock it at anything because it, white balance is just great to be auto. Sharpness, we're going to keep at low because I do some post image processing. Same thing with color. Uh, this is entirely optional. I keep it at flat. You guys can choose natural or vibrant. Entirely up to you. Uh, everything else I pretty much keep standard. Now with the run cam, I really don't do anything different. The only thing I do is I set the resolution to 2704 by 1524 at 60 FPS and then go over to the field of view section and set that to wide. Everything else is standard and I keep it all at auto. All right, now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about choosing your own and building your own camera setup. Which camera should I choose? Which kind of mounting option should I choose, et cetera, et cetera. We're gonna start things off with mounting options. So one of the most common mounting options that you will see is gonna be on the helmet or on your die mask or some sort of mask. The helmet one can be right up front and center or to the side, same thing with the mask, can be on the mouth guard area or on the side. Both of these will give you that first person perspective, that dynamic POV that you get with an action packed scene such as airsoft. You get to capture the motion, capture any sort of turn that you make, seeing an enemy really quickly, picking up your gun, shooting the enemy, also seeing your hands and your gun and the entire atmosphere being captured really nicely. This is the primary benefit of using a camera and either a head or slash face mounting option. This is the one that you see most people run and this is the one that I run. Uh, as my primary camera. And if it was my personal recommendation for you guys to run one angle and one angle only, it would be either getting a head 
or face mount with a camera attached. I think it's the most dynamic perspective, one that everyone uses and there's a reason why everyone uses it and one that will give you the most amount of content compared to some of the other options that we'll talk about today. Speaking of, our next option is going to be a shoulder mount. This has also been one of the primary options that I've seen out there on the field. People will put a camera on their shoulder, giving them a very fixed perspective of the playing field. You'll see your hands, you'll see your gun going up, and you'll see pretty much anything that your shoulder is actually facing towards. That's the one caveat. If you turn your head, your camera will still be facing forward. You'll also get a really cool perspective that makes you look like you're not necessarily the player that's playing, but you'll feel like you're a side watcher watching the gameplay from a third person kind of point of view from the side. It's a very unique perspective and not one that I would personally run, but it does give a very dynamic look to the footage. It will be a little bit more jittery, especially if you don't have any sort of image stabilization because every vertical movement that you do when you run, crouch, or anything will be captured by the camera on the side. Camera on your shoulder is also gonna be more susceptible to shakes and micro vibrations from just your body. Now, compare that to your head. Of course, your head is a natural gimbal, not the best gimbal in the world like a chicken head, but your head does have its own natural stability that your shoulder might not necessarily give you. Again, a very cool and dynamic option. Uh, and they make mounts that will attach to your chest rig or chest plate that you can just attach to your shoulder. Sticking with the theme of fixed perspectives is a chest rig. Now, this is going to give you that body cam level kind of perspective. And this is my least favorite one because it is very fixed. It also has the same issue when it comes to stability that the shoulder cam would. And worst of all, your gun is right here, right? The camera is gonna be blocked by your gun and by your hands every time you pick up that gun to start shooting. Versus the other two options, the shoulder cam might be blocked maybe once or twice if it's on your dominant side, and the helmet cam won't be blocked at all by the gun unless you're scoping down, and even then if you have a wide enough field of view, it won't be blocked by the gun. You'll still get this round. Chest cam on the other hand, for the most part, is almost always gonna be blocked, which isn't fun, and you're just gonna get a big gun in the middle of the frame uh, when you're going to edit the footage. So those are the body level mounting options. There's another one uh, with kind of an asterisk. If you have a 360 camera, you can always mount this stick for the 360 camera. And we'll talk about cameras a little bit later, but you can mount that stick to your back or backpack and have the pole sticking out the very top. So you can get that God's eye perspective that you can get with 360 cameras. This is a very cool perspective. And I wouldn't necessarily consider this as a primary camera angle. This would be more so a secondary camera angle. That'll give you a really cool dynamic shot. It's just, you will be increasing your physical foot print by having a pole stick out the very top. Now, there are many other ways that you can actually mount a 360 camera to your body. Of course, you can put it on your shoulder, you can put it on your face, but the way to actually get that God's eye would be to stick a pole down your backpack or on your chest plate and then have it stick it all the way to the, to the top. Now, those are mounting options for your body. Moving on, you have an accessory that you're carrying with you all the time. That's your gun. You can mount cameras onto your gun, which is pretty cool. These cameras are going to be towards the front of the gun, so it will be weighing your gun down. That is a consideration that you might have to take into account of if you really don't want a heavier gun, then you might not want to attach a camera to it, but it does give you a couple of cool options. First up is the scope cam. This this is going to be mounted at the very front of your gun right in parallel with the barrel so you can see where the bbs go and you get that really nice zoomed in perspective of who's getting shot where your bbs going people calling your hits no captures pretty much anything that you point at it in a zoomed in image this is where my run cam comes into play and this is my secondary camera of choice now the second option when it comes to the gun camera and the last mounting option that we're going to be talking about today is the selfie cam. Now this is going to be an action camera mounted either to the side, to the front, or to the underneath of your gun's front rail, giving you essentially a selfie stick. But the selfie stick is a airsoft gun. I really like this angle. Uh, this is one that I've thought about incorporating into my videos. It is just a little bit cumbersome, especially if I have a scope cam and a selfie cam and a main camera. It would just be a lot of editing and synchronization. But this is a very cool angle and one that I really like. It'll capture pretty much anything that's going on behind me whenever I have the gun up. If a teammate comes up behind me, it'll capture that. If I have someone coming up to like knife me in the back in gameplay, it'll capture that. Any sort of weird stuff that happens when you're actually scoped down or moving around or running around, it'll capture that. It's basically a selfie stick that you're carrying around at all times lots and lots of youtubers out there have used this angle and it looks really cool it gives a lot more of a personal look to your videos as well because you can see who it is behind that first person camera 
uh, or shoulder camera, whatever main camera you might have. Airsofters don't always get to see who it is that's actually shooting. In this way, they can't. All right, now that we got mounting options out of the way, let's talk about cameras. Now, if you're allocating a budget for two cameras, spend the most amount of money on the one that's actually going to be your primary one, which is going to be either the one that's on your head or wherever you decide to make your primary camera. That way you get the most amount of quality on the one that's gonna bring you the most amount of footage. Spend the rest of your budget, whatever you have left, on your secondary camera. There are lots of options out there and we're gonna start by knocking out one of them. Buying the cheap Amazon cameras. These are cameras that offer a great price point and will offer all the cool features that bigger brands such as GoPro, Insta360, and DJI might have. But it's, for the most part, in my opinion, Hocus Pocus. I would stray away from buying any of these brands, mainly because of inferior stabilization, especially when it comes to an action sport, low light performance being very subpar, not being able to handle transitions between dark and light zones that you always see when you play airsoft, and not readily having replacement parts. This is airsoft. It is a very dynamic sport. You'll be outside, you'll be inside, There'll be light spaces and dark spaces, colors changing all over the place when you're playing indoors. The camera will get shot multiple times and things can break. So all of these reasons that I mentioned are valid reasons that you might want to take into consideration when going the cheaper route that might save you a few coins when you're first purchasing your camera, but might cost you in the long run when you decide, oh man, this isn't the camera that I want. This doesn't look as good as I wanted it to be. And then you shell out more money to buy something a little bit better, which is of course where the next option comes in, which is buying a used camera off Facebook Marketplace. There is no disrespect for those who don't have the money to shell out for a nice camera, not at all, but your budget is your budget. And to find the best value for your budget, I would go to Facebook Marketplace and buy action cameras that are within that budget. I suggest the likes of GoPro Hero 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13 are going to get pretty expensive, but pretty much anything past the GoPro 7 would be pretty decent and would actually be good in the long run. That's just my personal opinion. You can also buy cameras from DJI and Insta360. They also make action cameras that you can find in the secondhand marketplace, such as Facebook or Craigslist or Offer. I would highly suggest buying a used camera if you're really restricted with your budget rather than going and buying uh, one of the cheaper alternatives that you can find on Amazon. This is speaking from experience of having owned multiple of the budget options from Amazon. Jumping on into new options, uh, GoPro Hero 11 Black or Mini, or Hero 12, Hero 13 that's out now as well, and the really cool brand new GoPro Hero. This is a lot of value packed into a tiny, tiny little camera. It does have a screen on the back, so that is something that you do have to consider. It can potentially get shot. Most of the GoPros nowadays have a camera on the back. The one that really doesn't is the Hero 11 Mini that I use. But the GoPro Hero that came out recently doesn't have a screen on the front. It seems very tiny and lightweight and for the most part, pretty durable. It comes in at a fantastic price point when it comes to a brand new action camera and it's chock full of features that you might get in a lot of the other GoPro cameras that they make. A brand that's very well known for making action cameras. You also have the new offerings from DJI with their Osmo line. I personally haven't had any experience with those, but those are action cameras that have also been tried and true and do fit the bill of being a quality action camera with readily replaceable parts, good durability, great image stabilization, and overall just a great product in general. Insta360 also comes into play not only with the 360 camera space, which my recommendations are the 1X, X2, X3, and X4. They will all have a wide ranging uh, feature set that you might want to upgrade down the line for. My personal recommendation when it comes to 360 cameras would just be sticking with the X3 if you just want one camera that will last you quite a while and has a great feature set. But going back to the action camera stuff, Insta360 does make a couple of other action cameras that aren't just 360 cameras. Again, going back to great stabilization, well-known company, great quality and durability, and an abundance of options for you to choose from in the new and used marketplace. When it comes to the cameras that are going to be on your gun, this selfie camera can be as expensive or as least expensive as you'd like. Again, this is going to be a secondary camera and not your primary. So allocate your budget accordingly. When it comes to scope cam options, uh, you have three brands. You have the one that's offered from Novrich. You have the multiple options that are offered by Runcam at various different price points. And then you have the one option from Foxeer. My main recommendation would be the one that I'd buy. That was a little bit more on the pricier side for me personally, but it was a well worth investment because of all the reasons that I mentioned in the video 
that I talked about the entire product for recently. I wouldn't necessarily recommend the option from Navrich because it essentially has an Xbox record type feature where it only records a short clip when you press the button rather than continuous recording that I personally like to have and that I feel like most people might like to have. Runcam offers a bunch of different options at various different price points. They have the Runcam Lite, which is only like a hundred bucks. They have the Runcam 4K uh, that I bought. They have the Runcam 2, which is a little bit more of an older model and has a couple of caveats associated with that, but they do have a wide range of options. Foxeer has the most expensive option. It does seem to be a little bit better quality than the run cam option that I have, and also seems to have a couple of the features that the run cam option might not either. Overall, you can't really go wrong with either of the run cam offerings or the Foxeer camera. Entirely up to you guys, but those are the offerings that exist. But yeah, that was the overview for cameras. Moving on to the last section are going to be accessories. Now, most of these accessories, you're not going to be able to get away without. The first one we want to talk about are the mounts itself. Now, these can be 3D printed if you really want to be on the more budget-oriented side and you own a 3D printer, or you can purchase one off of Amazon or Brain Exploder or any of the websites that might offer the specific mount that you're looking for. These mounts can range from like $10 to like $25-ish and maybe more. So this is going to be a unavoidable cost. There's going to be ranging levels of durability as well. You do want to look at reviews and see what's going to be the most durable. Because again, Airsoft is a very action sport, one where you're running all the time and potentially bumping into things and people. The next thing is going to be buying enough storage for your airsoft videos. An average airsoft day for me looks at around three hours, three and a half hours. So I need a sizable drive given the settings that I use in order to store all of my footage for the day. SD cards can run you a pretty penny, especially if you want one that's quality and a high storage capacity. If you're recording anything that's more than 1440p, there is a certain threshold of quality that you want to meet. And this is going to be listed on the camera specific website for that model. They'll usually have some SD card recommendations for that. The main reason to spend that extra money is so when you're out there recording super cool clips and doing all these cool things, you don't want to come home to realize that your footage is corrupt. You ran out of storage and it cut off before you hit the clip or your drive just decided to randomly die. Speaking from personal experience. So spending that extra money on good quality SD cards might save you in the long run. And I have some, again, recommendations in the description. Now, the next thing is going to be protection for your cameras. For my Hero 11 Mini, I have this very seamless, clear glass screen protector on the very front of my lens just to protect my camera's lens itself. I am on the more daredevil side, so I don't really have a waterproof protector or any sort of outside housing protecting my camera from any airsoft hits on the body, mainly because I trust the quality of the camera and I trust the durability of it. If you don't, you also want to probably invest into a waterproof housing or some sort of 3D printed housing that can take the brunt of the damage from a BB instead of the camera directly. Most cameras nowadays come with a Gorilla Glass covering over the lens and the lens replacements are pretty easy and affordable. But why take the risk? Buy a really cheap glass protector for your camera. I'll link the one that I use in the description, of course. My scope cam, I don't really protect it at all. Again, it's higher quality. It's, it's built for airsoft, so it's got that metal housing and Corning Gorilla Glass at the very front, so it can take a couple of hits. It also unscrews really nicely, so I can buy a replacement if it does ever get shot. But buying protection for your equipment is important and potentially a cost that you might want to consider when buying a camera. Especially if you also have a screen on the back, those things get shot. I know it's backwards, yes, but if you just get shot from the back, wrong angle, it can shatter that screen. God forbid you have a camera with one of those front screens nowadays. Those will definitely get shot as well. The next accessory is completely optional. These are ND filters. If you're playing outside and you want to capture that motion blur and you set your shutter speed to one over two times your frame rate and you want that sweet, sweet motion blur and that buttery smoothness of the action, but you have that really bright light from the sun hitting you, you want these ND filters to be put onto the front of your camera. This will block out the sun, giving you also a nice crisp image. I don't use these because I play indoors and there's no sun, but if you're going to be using my specific settings that give you that nice motion blur and you're planning on playing outside, definitely going to need these ND filters. There are lots of videos out there explaining what ND filters do and the science behind it. You will probably have to find ones that fit your camera specifically because all cameras lens housings are different. I just have these 3D printed mounts that I put just the ND filters glass into. Now the last potential accessory is a battery. The same reason why you want to invest into a quality drive and storage is the same reason you want to potentially invest into a battery bank. That way footage doesn't get cut off midway, your camera doesn't die midway, and you just lose an entire day of gaming. Now I run 
a battery bank on my helmet with a wire that runs down the middle and connects into my GoPro at all times. That way it's charging while recording and I'm not missing a beat. This gives me that peace of mind knowing that my camera is going to be recharged at all times and I wouldn't have to worry whether or not I have enough juice left in the camera for the rest of the day. I used to run a battery as well on my gun with my run cam. And this is the caveat that I mentioned earlier with the older generation run cams where the battery runs out really quickly. So I needed to attach a secondary battery on the front of my gun, which was added weight and added wiring and complication. But I don't have that issue anymore with the new run cam, which is fantastic. But I still do run a battery on my helmet. So you might want to invest into these battery accessories as well as a mounting option for these battery accessories to wherever your camera is. So it has that continuous flow of juice. You could also just buy a battery bank and a fast charger and just charge it during a break in between your gaming day. That is entirely an option too. But yeah, that's it for today's video. Uh, hopefully these tips and the things to consider uh, were helpful for you when deciding whether or not you want to buy a certain camera or start investing into a certain angle or not. Let me know in the comment section below if you guys have a specific setup that you love, that you want everyone else to know about that I didn't cover today. Because as you know, my videos aren't like an end-all be-all solution to anything. There are gonna be things that I left out on accident. Also, if you have any questions related to Airsoft or anything, comment down below. Other than that, I'll leave you guys to it. Like the video if you end up liking it, subscribe if you want more content, and I'll see you in the next one.